Hi, I'm Akhil Dua. You're listening to my e-commerce journey podcast, where every Monday I speak to an entrepreneur on how they built a successful online business in India. The show is brought to you by Sellers Army, India's first private community for owners and managers of online stores. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy the conversation. I'll do a quick introduction. Moto Usher is the leading um, official importer of close to 70 plus international brands in India. And uh, you have uh, done a fabulous job of uh, creating a market for spare parts um, and accessories for high-end bikes uh, in our country. So welcome so much, Rahul. And thank you for having me. This is wonderful, man. I, like I said, I've been, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Uh, I want to st- jump right into uh, to how things got started. And, and we'll start from the top uh, and, we'll, sure. and we'll take it from there. So tell me the, the year you... Uh, you first started Moto Usher and more interestingly, how did you figure out the niche that you currently are in? Okay, so in 2014, I uh, bought my first uh, motorcycle. It was a Bonneville. Uh, it's a Triumph bike. That's when uh, Triumph had India, Triumph in India had launched. So one of my friends, Shazad, uh, he said, let's just uh, drive down to Hyderabad and have a look at uh, the new motorcycles. Yeah. So that, that time I wasn't uh, riding much. Uh, the closest I had ridden a motorcycle was uh, used to borrow uh, my friend's bike in my society and used to uh, drive, ride it up and down on the street where I was allowed to. Um, that's how I learned and I used to do willies and stoopies being at the weight that I am right now. <laughs> so uh, it was fun. I mean, um, uh, growing up, you know, uh, requesting my friend's bikes. And yeah. what happened is um, once we went to, with Shazad, when we went to Hyderabad and we uh, we saw the motorcycles. I really loved them. And uh, they were the first time Triumph had come into India. So we hadn't seen something like that before. And um, immediately I had my uh, heart on one of the bikes. So I decided to go back, took a, a week to decide. And then um, without telling my parents, uh, ended up uh, booking a motorcycle. Um, <laughs> so so that's, that's how it started. And then once it wa- uh, came to Nagpur, um, I started changing things I did not like in the bike, as in uh, change the way the number plate uh, looked, change the way the foot pegs were, everything that we are allowed to do uh, at the same time, everything that makes uh, things more cooler or ergon- ergonomically better. So I used to um, I either make these parts or get them. And what happened is I used to start blogging about them, uh, how I changed the, uh, the foot peg or I, how I altered the parts that I bought from the market just to customize them. And I started getting a lot of uh, comments on the group saying that, oh, there's something available like this over here. There's something that you can do, uh, you know, by picking it up from here. So whenever I used to buy them, uh, my friends used to ask them, uh, ask me to get a few for them as well. So that's how the journey started. And then I realized, okay, a lot of friends are already asking me, why don't I do it professionally? Why don't I make, uh, you know, start importing them and selling them? So a couple of uh, uh, products which were really being sought after, I decided to uh, import them as a professional importer. So I basically, um, one I, in, in Nagpur, there is like this, um, in, next to uh, VCA, there is this tea stall where everybody goes to. Right behind that is where the uh, uh, IEC, as in the import export certificates are awarded. So, right. uh, I was, I was, so I met a few friends there and we were chatting and they were like, uh, you, sh- uh, you should probably import it yourself. And I looked it up and I'm like, oh, it's right there. Let me just walk across <laughs> and see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, so, hold my tea glass. I'll be right back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, I went and talked to them and they said it's most of it is online now, but you can, once you've uh, uh, entered your details on the website, you can just walk across and submit your additional details and get it done. So that's how it started. A lot of rules and regulations and, um, uh, were not known at that time, um, which is something that I, um, I feel that I want to add value to the community. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, at some time in the future, we'll be blogging about it or, you know, telling people on how and why these things are important. We did not know how the import process looks like, uh, at that time, uh, there was a lot of internet, uh, uh, blogs, or there were a lot of information available online, but it's not as cool as or not as informative as the process is now. I mean, um, recently the government has been publishing a lot of data. So coming back to your question. So um, it started like that and I used to, one after the other, I started importing products and getting dealerships or 
uh, being a distributor, it requires a lot of experience. A lot of companies are usually hesitant. Yeah. Uh, so one by one, I used to start uh, requesting email, giving them our backgrounds and uh, on what we can and how we can help them. Some of them have been us there with us since 2014. And um, I mean, we just kept on adding brands. Yeah, but I, I understand it could not have been easy to convince a, uh, a high-end bike manufacturer to send you spare parts because like you said you didn't have the experience you were you were more of a, a passionate rider and you wanted to add value uh, but it could not have been easy to call up you know any company and say hey i want to start importing your spare parts in india so um, i mean i'm going to um, rephrase the question a bit because um, i would explain you how it works in this a uh, lot of companies don't actually sell their after uh, their uh, spare parts these are all aftermarkets so I'll give you an example, like, uh, ba let's say Bajaj, for example, I mean, I'm not quoting Bajaj, but I'm just saying, let's say, uh, they would not sell their spare parts out there to the public. They will only have their authorized dealers within the country with, uh, the imported manufacturers. It's kind of the same, uh, up to now. I mean, in bigger countries, they have opened up to third party people getting their spare parts. But what we do is we have, we are, we are importing products, which are from a, a person who's making parts for these bikes under their own brand. So for example, it could be, um, let's say a, a, a brand which sells you gym equipment, which is they are manufacturing on their own, not necessarily a, a brand like a, a Reebok or a Talwarkar or whatever. So the, so we are actually in a way selling similar parts to what the OEM manufacturers uh, um, uh, are or um, the, the companies are. So we are uh, we're trying to get the best and the best and the latest being imported to the country. Right. And to answer your question, it wasn't, too, it wasn't easy. I mean, it took a lot of emails. Sometimes I had to fly in to the countries to meet them. I've been to, I've literally been all over the world to just speak with them and get the brands here in India. And that shows your, that shows that you, you believed in the product even before you made the first sale, which brings me to the question, how did you make your first sale? Um, so it's actually, uh, you're right on the mark. I mean, um, I only bought or imported products that I would use myself, that I would trust uh, being a part of the bike uh, uh, that rides at 110, 130, 150, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, um, know that uh, that part has a very little chance or no chance of failing when, when it's on the bike. So, I mean, it's not like a a spacecraft part that it will not have any failure. But if you know that you're buying from the best, the chances of that are the least. And and the least maybe that you'll never ever know anybody who's had a problem with that part. Okay. Do you remember um, making that first sale? Was it to a friend? Uh, was it to a to somebody you didn't know? How? <laughs> uh, it was definitely to a probably to a, a, a acquaintance or a group or a, or a person I I knew, not def not necessarily a friend, but. Um, I definitely know that. I mean, I remember the first few months. I so I I did sh I do share my dad's uh, working space, and after the first uh, three four months, when I had done probably just a little over a couple of lakhs of sale, I I went to the accountant and I realized that we have actually done that much of sale, which was not much, but still a lot, considering that uh, it was not like it was just me importing a, a few parts and selling it to people I know or whatever, and and at the same time realizing that there was no system in the office to actually track the inventory <laughs> and, <laughs> or the the bills were still handmade and I, and I and i had to really get my game on to set the system up but but you were but the system was i mean you could build the system but if the uh, if the transactions are not there then there's really no point in building the system so the system can be built but you know having having those first few sales in the first couple of months, you know, whatever, it could have been thousands, it could have been lakhs. I think that has to be a very powerful and a very uh, a gratifying experience, right? To, to believe in something, to make it actually reach the customer, you know, that, that whole cycle is, is, is amazing. So um, for me, it was all about firefighting. <laughs> so yeah. I, have, I have spent... Um, I always aspire to reach a certain level and I don't mean level in terms of sales. I mean, in, in level of doing every action. So if I wanted to um, get a product to a customer and I, they wanted, they are paying, they were paying for a shipping. 
I wanted to know how easily and quickly I could do it. How how convenient can it be? And in that process, we learned um, a lot of different things. Like I, I remember myself going through the, I don't remember what year it was, the Postal Act 1942. Ah, so it. Just, <laughs> yeah, just to know, just to know uh, what I'm getting into when I'm signing a contract with a courier agent or not. And, and it, a lot of people don't read it. And I, and I know that's how, and that's something that I want to change. But, but what I'm trying to get at is that every time there was um, something that needed to be done, my whole time and effort was into actually figuring out how we can do better with less efficiency rather than somebody from the office going and delivering a product to a courier agency's office, how can we have them come over? What do they need for, uh, so that we can save that time, we can automate things, we can make, improve the process. It, it reminds me of a piece of advice that my one of my mentors for this project gave me the first week that I started. She said, Akhil, building a community is so much work. Right from the beginning, think about systems and processes that you can automate and that will help you actually add value to your community and not be just involved in the administrative work. So I, I understand where you're coming from. What is the, uh, Rahul, what is the business model at the moment? I know you have a, the, the e-commerce presence. That's the, you know, that's, that's the, the business that we're talking about. But uh, do you also have any offline stores that you showcase your products? Okay. Uh, the goal of the company is to have uh, dealers across the country uh, representing the brands to the best of their ability. Okay. We as a, uh, a importer and a distributor are uh, just a means for the brands to express themselves best in the country. And because most brands are there in their own zones, they yeah. might or might not understand or associate with the country that they're selling to. So an importer funnels that and translates that vision uh, into the country. Uh, for motorcycles, there are um, a lot of places in the country where there are not many or not um, very resourceful motorcycle stores. For those people, we wanted to cater with a website. Mm -hmm. Plus, our dealers or our, uh, our, our resellers, they usually get a, a, a lot of wealth of information on our website. We endeavor to make sure that our website has more information than any other thing out there. For example, if you were to ask a question um, and we uh, emailed or responded to a question from a customer, uh, we make sure or we endeavor to make sure that's published on the website within the next time frame that is allotted to be updated. What that does is that in today's age and era where you want to automate and save time, being present on the website kind of makes you be available, uh, be best representative, best representative at all times. And that's what we wanted to do the web, with the website. Our intention was never to really sell uh, directly or sell um, uh, to the consumers. It ended up being like that because people found uh, the information and the value we were adding on the website cool. So, I mean, um, we support all our, um, our dealers with their websites, with the content and with all of that. And we want, so I personally believe that, and I'm, I'm kind of contradicting here, you might, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I believe that local shops and uh, the principles, they need to work hand in hand because only when the chain and the ecosystem uh, works well is when all the parties really uh, grow. Um, it could be an example, I mean, speaking, coming back to the same track where, for example, if I speak about uh, the beautiful states of Kerala or beautiful states of, um, of even further, let's say Tamil Nadu. A lot of times, uh, a lot of people would want to speak in their local language or they understand their local language much better than whatever other language is being spoken by wherever the principle is. Now that kind of helps uh, the local person bridge the gap, like how we as importers are bridging the gap between uh, the, the manufacturer in the other country coming down to India. So it's a win-win for the person to walk into a store, see the awesome display or whatever display can be best represented by that storekeeper 
or um, and and usually these people are not just business not just businessmen they are people who are passionate about riding who ride themselves or who love motorcycles so how it is with sports or most of the other products too i mean that's one thing that has beautifully come out in the uh, more recent generation we usually don't get into something unless we really like to do it or unless it's a unless it's a very necessity based thing so yeah. unlike our parents or their parents who who had to do things and they literally even if they had option they did not consider those yeah, so, so uh, i i completely agree you were not you were not contradicting me at all i i am of the main uh, i am also of the of the same uh, thought process that the e-commerce platform can amplify your business it can it can take your whatever you're doing to another level it can add uh, streams of revenue for your business it is not to replace what you have been doing all this time it is not to replace the local model the local model will always be there because you know there are there are things that you want to feel and touch and take a demo of that you really can't do it on on a website a website and having e-commerce presence and selling online just increases the uh, you know your diameter of reaching uh, your your target consumer which brings me to the next question that i wanted to figure out from you is that is it is it easier to convince a passionate rider who has already purchased a 5 lakh rupee bike because he is absolutely crazy about bikes to buy ancillary products that will make his bike or her bike look cooler or um, become more functional or ergonom ergonomically uh, better is it is it an easier job to do so um so i might not be the right person to answer this question because um i can i can speak about what we do and maybe uh, the audience uh, can pick up uh, what uh, is best suited to their uh, strategy our strategy is simple every product adds value in a certain way we uh, make sure that that value addition is um, expressed in the best of the ability um, if it leads to a sale wonderful if it does not lead to a sale it should definitely need, lead to a more informed customer and we repetitively do that um, and that's what i try to teach my team uh, or involve them to uh, express the same things it if we have spent 5 hours uh, answering questions to a customer and he can learn something new or he can know something more about uh, what he already knows we have done our part mm. um and after that it's up to him to decide we usually so um um we don't so in our organization we really don't reach out to customers or market we don't even reach out to dealers we usually uh, when they come to us or when there is a query we just put our best foot forward and one of the reasons why i love websites is because um a, a person uh, uh, might not echo or might not uh, be able to express the best uh, at um every time um, to each and every customer but with uh, let's say a, a a video or let's say with a with a website uh, uh, we can make sure that the product is represented to the uh, most truest and bestest of uh, its its uh, its ability for lack of a better word yeah so um, we keep on doing that and it usually works for us uh, mm. if i tell you uh, 10 things about the the cap that you're wearing and mm. and add on to the uh, the thread count and add on to the um, uh, everything else that it can do i'm sure you might just think about it's not whether it's not looking cool or not but that's anyway subjective but the yeah. the value that it adds to your uh, life is something that you can you'll probably remember or probably think about later when you need it so it brings up a very good point and it's something that anybody who's listening to this conversation i i really want you to maybe rewind this uh, last one one and a half minute and and hear what rahul just said is that he is not focused on making the sale by pushing his product down a customer's throat he is and his organization is more interested in making each and every touch point with the consumer be more on learning and education and knowledge once they have the knowledge of what products are available uh, of what these products can do 
then they can make an informed decision if they want to purchase or not, which is really how a sale should be. Where did you start marketing your product initially? I know now you have probably reached a point where dealers are coming back to you and, and asking for newer things and, and for reorders. But how did you initially um, start reaching out to people about, hey, I am Moto Usher, I'm a company that sells X, Y, and Z. If you have a need, come and talk to me. You know, you had to, you had to initially push it out. I think initially it was all about, as I said, getting the information up yeah. uh, and that helped. But since I already said that, I'll move to the other things we did. Yeah. Um, we did, um, I mean, Instagram, uh, fa- Facebook, not so much nowadays, but yeah, definitely Instagram. Yeah, uh, Instagram helped. fire, dude. Uh, Your Insta yeah, is on go. fire. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, yep. we'll, get, we'll get back to that, but I loved it, man. It's, it's doing so, really thank good. Thank you. So uh, we have a wonderful uh, uh, team uh, person who has joined us, uh, who's a tiger rider of late. And uh, he has been given the uh, responsibility of uh, taking care of uh, Instagram and other marketing aspects. And he's thoroughly been a gem to the team and he's uh, adding a lot of value. And we'll, I'll, I'll speak about that when we cool. come to that question again. <laughs> but um, uh, I think uh, since we are in Nagpur, a lot of times we uh, being on email and website is cool, as I said before, but um, it loses the human touch. And what has, uh, what really helped us is even if we would not, would not get a lot of so-called leads yeah. or uh, sales, which is, which is uh, really not something that we, um, are looking for, we do get a lot of people that meet us when we go to exhibitions okay. or we go to events. And at the end of the day, uh, the products. So um, I'll, I'll just come back to a couple of things again before I continue with this sentence. First yes. of all, everything in life is a tool. Hmm. When, I, when, I, when I drink water, it's a tool. When, I, when I'm talking to you using an app, it's a tool. Yeah. When we are trying to do something, it's, it's, we are, uh, the tool is through a interview to get to um, something that we want to achieve. Yeah. So every product is a tool and um, how we can add value uh, with that tool is what we try to discuss. Now that being said and coming back to how I can associate uh, with us, our tools are actually going out uh, riding. So because most of the motorcycles we deal with are off-road adventure bikes, yeah. touring bikes. So for us, these tools are all about getting your hands dirty, being on the road, the wind on your face, all those beautiful things which sound jargon, but are true indeed. Uh, actually being in connect with, with life, uh, how that person best knows, in this case, being a motorcycle, mm. uh, that adrenaline or whatever you want to uh, call it, how you want to resonate with- Whatever's with going through your veins. Oh. <laughs> So when we are with them at these events um, ne- with, with dust on our face or, um, you know, right next to a motorcycle, just touching and feeling those new bikes or, or feeling that, that ergonomics uh, uh, under our butts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, 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 uh, so it's, it's all of that really helps us connect more. And more than that, we actually get to know what we, uh, we get a feedback or what we are doing right or what, what people are loving and um, knowing how we can improve or how we can further add value. So um, that really helps. And I, I know e-commerce and uh, um, uh, stores help, but being at these events, they might not be really worth from the perspective of uh, the ROI of the money, but from the perspective of the human touch and uh, really knowing your customers more, it's, it's, it's wonderful and it really helps us every time. I can't agree with you more. I, I have been, I always knew that this time would come where no business would be able to survive without building a community around what they are selling and what they are doing or maybe tap into an already existing community. I think now it is just becoming more and more apparent that you have to you have to go beyond the transaction of buying one mm-hmm. thing, selling one thing, and actually 
you know, be with your customer and experience what they experience on a daily basis on, on going and meeting them at events that they go to, hanging out with them at bars, having lunch or dinner with them, talking about their family and really understanding, you know, what their life is like. And then you can add, try and add more value to the product that you're selling. Can we, can you share some numbers with us from the year that you started, uh, 2014? And whatever you're comfortable with and where you are today and what are your projections going forward? So, um, we, I, can, I can tell you this, that we have grown about, hmm, about 11 times uh, in the last uh, four years. Okay. And um, um, now I think uh, is a time when our growth will not be as fast, of course. Sure. Uh, but um, a lot of, uh, by automating things, by by being a system driven uh, company for example uh, we are now uh, we already have about uh, 30 odd policies that we have published for our 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 small 9 to 10 member team but now we are so i mean on another note we are actually we opened a branch in bangalore now okay. and we are opening a experience center uh, in bangalore where we will be displaying each and every uh, part uh, of our uh, portfolio um, so that the customers can walk in, ask questions, touch and feel the products. Yeah. So um, uh, what I'm trying to get at, I mean, to answer your question again, I mean, uh, now we are trying to do different things to be more in more connect with the customer um, and see if that can help us uh, get a more solid platform uh, for a future. You're the type of guy who who does one thing once and then you want to find a way to automate it so that you don't have to repeat the same thing again, which is a sign of an, of a, of a genius entrepreneur. I, I really am. I'm, I'm glad about that, that you are doing this even when you are uh, a small time in your, in your mindset, a small time entrepreneur. So I know your, I know your website is on, uh, is on Shopify and I, I know you use uh, Zendesk for your customer service uh, uh, operations. Can you talk about those two tools and, and any other tools that you're using within the organization? Um, sure. Um, so I'll, I'll, um, okay, I'll start with um, uh, the main website. Our main website is uh, WordPress, um, not the shopping site. The shopping site is Shopify. I'll come to that in a bit. Um, we, on, on that, we, since uh, the flow and the uh, usefulness of WordPress for blogs or for customization is much more easy and usually cheaper. We go for WordPress uh, for our, our own web pages on FAQs, on our contact pages and everything else from our, even blogs or the podcast that we are going to be starting soon. Um, for the shop, the shop, it's definitely Shopify. And one of the reasons that is that it's, it has an awesome uptime. It's much faster. Uh, it's much easier. You can't really do a lot to mess your website up uh, with the WordPress. If you, if you get a wrong plugin or a wrong thing, you, your site might be down. Uh, Shopify with about probably like more than 50 apps uh, yeah. that we are buying or developing on our own for the customers um, uh, that help us get the whole experience package. Um, one of the things that we're working on now is to get a, a B2B portal for our dealers. Um, another thing that we did in the last month, so we, we use a tally as our ERP and we, we, we don't just use it for bills. We are a advanced level pro tally uh, user company where we have spent about easily close to a couple of lakhs a year just to develop the softwares that we want to on tally itself. And I'm not, I'm leaving. So from everything from our uh, MRP labels um, to be printed uh, to barcodes to um, to our stocks being synced with Shopify uh, has has been done on uh, to make sure that the customers can see our live stock on Shopify. And um, one of the reasons why we have had to keep Tally is because most of the team members or most of the talent that you find out in the market is more accustomed to Tally. So you know that your your bottleneck is either to um, have the resource uh, pool that you have. Or you need, or you train them. Um, in our case, since uh, there's a majority of people who are more uh, accustomed to tally, we decided it's better to use what we have and adapt it or customize it to our needs rather than teach them a new uh, Zoho. Like for example, for people who have 
don't have as advanced um, accounting standards as we do. Um, a Zoho uh, with a Shopify is um, hitting the um, hammer on the nail. It's, mm. it's a beautiful combination uh, for anybody who's starting out. I know Shopify is a little expensive now with the commission that they take from each sale, but um, it's definitely worth it to go for a combination of a Zoho, uh, a Shopify. And once you go with the Zoho, you can probably rather than the Zendesk, you can go for a, a Zoho um, customer service experience, probably Zoho CRM if that's what your company needs. Or so, uh, Zoho has really changed uh, the world. So I would definitely pitch for that. But coming back to a few other things that we've added is um, we, we use Zoho people for our policies, our HR tools. We use Dropbox. Dropbox is a godsend. Uh, most of our senior management is on 100% Dropbox. We do not, and it's a pro level Dropbox, it's an organization level Dropbox. So we pay thousands a year just for that, but it's totally worth it. We don't, um, we have shared folder for everything. So for example, um, uh, uh, when a purchase order is made on Tally, it's, it's exported to a Dropbox folder, shared with the team, which is purchase team. They approve it. They, they send it to the uh, 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 the manufacturer. Once the manufacturer sends their sales order, it's put in a in the same folder. Approved by the the operations team and this accounts goes to uh, uh, a second level where the account and every time the folder is changed, a notification is received by the team who is responsible. So they know that uh, action is needed. They uh, uh, sign the checks. Uh, the payments are processed. The bank the bank makes the payment. Uh, then it moves to uh, the third folder, which is the clearance folder, which I am also part of because I am the senior most who helps with the clearance. Once the clearance process is done, it uh, goes back to the accounts folder again. So just by using a tool, which is just for you sharing your mm. um, files, we have actually have, I don't know whether we spoke about this. I think we spoke about it when yeah, we met yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, we don't have, we don't even talk to each other. Like um, most of the times, uh, the system does the talking for us. Like when we make a purchase order on tally, we would enter notes saying emailed on such and such date or put in the folder on such and such date. Everything else is tracked. We used, we used to do is for our to do list. Now, again, if you are on Zoho platform, you can probably use Zoho because uh, it will help you integrate with one login. But uh, we, we use pro level and advanced level because we actually calculate the number of tasks done by each member each day and their performance management system is uh, associated with the to-do list. Okay. So, uh, so we, we actually integrate a lot of things and these are some of the things are new, like the performance management system is new. Um, now, I mean, these, these, are, these are things I would want to do earlier because, but because I was firefighting in uh, other things, I was not able to do this, but policies and um, uh, performance management system PMS is what we are working on now. One misstep or one mistake uh, that you would want other entrepreneurs to avoid? Oh, there are many. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, uh, I think definitely uh, systems and processes is something that people need to follow. I think the most important is realizing that you have the expectation of the team set. And um, most of the times we, we, we don't do that by not involving them enough or assuming that they would understand where we are coming from. Right. I also understand that it's very difficult in India because a lot of us come from a lot of varying backgrounds and a lot of different uh, mindsets. Um, need is a very strong word in the Indian community still because when I, wh why I say that is because here are the way the, we are still a developing country and a lot of us have a lot of different needs that are, uh, that are usually basic needs that I cannot cover my expenses this month, or I don't even have insurance. So um, understanding that from your team members and still making them understand where you want to go is, is, is something that we as entrepreneurs need to do. More importantly, having agreements with your team members, um, making them understand uh, what the principles and policies entail. For example, we have started having weekly meetings where we go through all the company policies, one or two policy per week, every Saturday, for example, in our case, uh, are going through the policy. It could be a travel policy. It could be an attendance policy. It could be a code of conduct policy, whatever. 
I know these policies, they sound as if um, we are a big company or it, it sounds as if, but um, like a family, how the head of the household would sit on a table and say, I don't like anybody going out of uh, the house after 10.30. Dinner will be served at 8.30 is what the mom tells you. Why don't we do that uh, properly in a company? Why do we... That's not how it works. How does a father uh, or a head of the household do it? He knows that he has to, uh, with a certain, uh, being, being the uh, head of the wolf pack, he knows that he has to say it in a certain tone. And I, I don't mean it politically. Uh, it has to be said in a right way. Anybody who's been listening to this, I guarantee you this is, you, you cannot even buy a course for 50,000 rupees of what Rahul just okay. taught us in half an hour. I am being absolutely serious. There's, there's people out there who are um, selling things on e-commerce and how to build businesses and how to run a company uh, who have never ran a company. And that is the reason why I want to speak to people who are in the thick and thin of things and, and hope that people can pick up on what, uh, what entrepreneurs are, are working on and and it's easy to, to take it, understand it, do your own research, add your own personality and bring it to your own organization. So Rahul, thank you so much. Um, I can only wish the best to Moto Asher. I think it's going to, it's going to be phenomenal, man. What a wonderful space that you're working in uh, and what a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful company you've, you've put together. Congratulations, man. I'm, I'm super proud of you, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me again. And I think uh, we'll keep in touch. Definitely. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and picked up on things you can use in your own business. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I post one new video every week and I don't want you to miss it.